How we doing, nation? Happy to bring you another Faith First here on this Monday. Um, my wife and I have been reading through the book of Luke um, as part of a Christmas reading plan. There's 24 chapters in Luke, 24 days until Christmas from the start of December. So each day you read another chapter, and it covers the entire life of Jesus. So <clears throat> we were reading out of Luke 8 last night, and there was a passage in there that I had read many times, and it hit me in a different way, and I wanted to share that with you all. Um, so there's going to be two pieces out of Luke 8 that I want to address here. Um, and I'm actually going to start with the second passage, which is Luke 8, verse 40, if you're following along at home. And it starts with, now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus said. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead, but he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. So I'm going to tackle this first passage first here. Um, you can see throughout the life of Jesus the faith of the non-Jewish people. Um, the woman who came up and just touched his cloak. Um, kind of a sign given to us that your faith is what's going to heal you. You don't have to be of Jewish descent to come to Christ. Christ is for everyone. Christ came for everyone, the Jew and the Gentile. Um, and if you're not sure what a Gentile is, if you're not Jewish, you're Gentile. Um, kind of some biblical terms there. But her faith, he said, is what healed her. So that's something to keep in mind there. She just went and had this belief that just touching Jesus would heal her. Um, which is the ultimate sign of faith. When you see Jewish leaders in here, the Pharisees, even his own disciples at times were questioning who Jesus really was. Um, yet people who weren't Jewish just came and believed who had no hope and put it all in Jesus and were healed. Um, so that kind of goes into this second one and what I wanted to talk about when Jairus comes and he um, now Jairus um, is a synagogue leader so he is Jewish and there were some um, just like today there's still um, Jewish people who are coming to Jesus in Christianity um, and he sends for Jesus to heal his daughter so Jesus performs one of the most powerful miracles he does, he does it multiple times, but bringing someone back from the dead. And this is so powerful, yet at the end he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. And again, this goes back to faith. If people go around and say, hey, Jesus you know, brought my daughter back from the dead. Jesus did this. Jesus did that. All of a sudden they're believing because of what they've seen. They're not believing for the right reasons. They're believing because, hey, Jesus can bring back my loved ones from the dead. Jesus can heal me of this. They're going more 
for the result and not the person. So just like how we don't really want friendships, we don't want people around us who would be our friends because of what we can bring them and we feel kind of used in that way. You know, Jesus wants us to come to him because we need forgiveness, because we want that healing relationship, not because of what he can give us. Because the only thing that he can give us that we should want is salvation. Everything else is just mercy poured out on us. Blessings given to us that we don't deserve. We shouldn't be, oh, okay, I'll be a Christian because Jesus will make my life easier. Because Jesus will heal me of this disease. Because good can come out of anything in our lives. And it will come out of anything in our lives if you're in Christ. But that doesn't mean it's going to instantly be better or that that issue is going to be taken away. Like Paul, his whole life was troubled with, we're not sure what it was. He says, you know, he had a thorn. We're not sure what that means. Um, but he prayed for God to take it away, and he didn't. Now, <clears throat> you can kind of see as you read through um, the books that Paul wrote that that thorn is kind of what kept him humble. That's one of the things that added to his humility, which helped in his ministry. Like me, my birth father abandoned us when I was younger. I never quite understood the point of that or the reasoning. But as I grew up, now I'm working with high school students who a lot of them don't have fathers. And God took that bad thing and made it a positive because I went through that. So following Jesus isn't going to make sure those bad things just go away and completely disappear. But it will ensure that it's going to be used for good. So... I want to carry on there when he said, um, tell no one what had happened, and jump back to Luke 8, verse 26, because he does something different here. They sailed to the region on the Gerasene, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stopped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken the chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had, had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasene asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. So the ending here is drastically different than the other story. And I think there's a big reason why. And this is kind of what hit me last night. First of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about what this demon's request was and why it's so important. The demons begged Jesus, please do not send us into the abyss. Now that's hell. Please do not send us there. Anywhere but hell. Send us to the pigs first. And I just want to say, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this shows how terrible hell is. That the demons are begging Jesus to not send them there. 
No human being should ever go to hell. If you don't know Jesus, this is a great time of year to get that taken care of. Jesus came into the world to save us of our sins, and he came into the world at Christmas time. This would be a great time for him to forgive you of your sins. So please, if you haven't gotten that taken care of, there's no time like the present. Get it done today. You can email me, Cody's Card Closet at gmail.com. I'll help walk you through it. But it's just something that you need to get taken care of today if you haven't yet. And I'm praying for those watching this that don't know Jesus that you'll be able to get taken care of. But I wanted to talk about the end. The people of this town were scared by what Jesus did and had asked him to leave because of it. They were like, leave. Um, go from here. Because they were scared um, at how powerful Jesus was. So he left. And that's a scary verse. Jesus got in his boat and left. Because Jesus did not return physically to that land. Um, and sadly, there's people out there who keep saying no, no, no. To Jesus and the Holy Spirit today and eventually you say no enough you know he'll leave you be um, and he won't come for you so this story kind of parallels what happens today Jesus told this man because he wanted to come and serve him he told him no return to your town and tell what God has done for you now, a lot of these times Jesus is saying, tell no one. But Jesus wasn't physically returning to this town. So in a way, this man who he healed becomes one of the first evangelists in the New Testament because he is going back to his village and sharing what Jesus has done for him. The power of Jesus, the power of God to heal people. Because Jesus wasn't coming back. So it says he went back to his village and told everyone about what God had done for him. So this is a parallel of what we can do today. Jesus isn't physically here. When he reascended to heaven, he left the Holy Spirit with us. Which, I'll try and do a video on it later on. The Trinity's very confusing. But there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus left the Holy Spirit to come and be with us and live inside of us as Christians until he returns again. So, as Jesus is physically back in heaven, he's also asked us to go and share what God has done for us. Just like this man in Luke. We are to go and share the good news, share what God's done for us, share what he's healed us from, share how he saved us, Share how he takes care of us, his merciful nature, his caring spirit. Sharing everything that God has done for us with those around us. And it's a perfect parallel right here in Luke. He's going to talk about it later on with the Great Commission message. A lot of other sermons he does, the Sermon on the Mount. But this is such an interesting parallel right here in Luke 8. About returning home, telling how much God has done for you. So I just want to encourage you today, one, if you're not a Christian, this is a great time to get it taken care of. Just think, if the demons were so afraid and wanted to avoid hell so much, think of how terrible that must be. And that you have a chance today to come, not just live life and escape hell, but live life more abundantly because of Jesus Christ as your Savior. So, if you haven't gotten that taken care of, get that taken care of today. And if you are a Christian, look at this lesson here in Luke 8 and what Jesus told this man to do. Return home and tell everyone about what the Lord has done for you. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. In this season, a lot of people are going to be more receptive to the story of Jesus because it's the Christmas story. So, this is a great time to talk to a neighbor, a friend, a family member who might not know Christ and share with them what he's done for you. So 
hopefully this encouraged you today, gave you something you can take into the week. I'd love to hear your stories about what Christ has done for you. Please send them to me at Cody's Card Closet at gmail.com. Also, if you have any stories um, throughout the week about how you shared the gospel with someone, you shared your story with someone, I'd love to hear those too. I hope that you guys can motivate and encourage me the way I motivate and encourage you, and that comes through your emails. So I look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day. God bless.